Take three celebrities. Send them off to a remote house in the country. Then seal them in. With no computers, TVs, newspapers or mobile phones, they'll be completely cut off from the outside world. So how will they know what's been going on while they've been in... the bubble? Good evening, I'm David Mitchell and welcome to The Bubble, the show where we ask three celebrities to spend the week completely cut off from the outside world. No newspapers, no TV, no internet, nothing. So they won't know that the marriage between Kate Winslet and Sam Mendes has split down the middle, just like the Titanic. Though an iceberg is not involved. <laughs> unless Kate threw a lettuce at him. <laughs> now, fans of the show have been saying they'd like to see more of what goes on when the guests are inside The Bubble. Well, your wish is my command. Happy now? <laughs> Press the red button and you can see less of that. <laughs> Before we set them free, we're going to show them a selection of news reports. Some of them are genuine, some of them have been faked. But will they be able to tell the difference? So, let's meet tonight's guests. Straight from the bubble, please welcome Josie Long, Tim Key and Katie Brand. Well, well, welcome to you all. Thank you. So you've genuinely been, been isolated from all news media and TV and internet yeah. and everything we for a week. We weren't even allowed to talk to each other. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you've been so isolated, you won't know the, the terrible news that David Beckham has injured his ankle and won't be in the World Cup as a result. His, his, the expression is his World Cup dream is over. Is that true? Although it's... Uh, yes, that is true. Is oh, you, are you shocked? <laughs> oh, you care! His ankle oh, my God, you care! <laughs> his, ankle. <laughs> his ankle just looked so strong when we went into the bubble. It's <laughs> 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 good ankle. Well, there you go. I went through three seconds. I went, oh, that's a shame. Ah, oh, I think he's a dick. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for that to come in. Yeah, also, I'm in there, yeah, I'm in there, yeah. Also, God, his, world, his World Cup dream is a boring dream. He, <laughs> he's been in World Cups before. Yeah. Is that what his dream's like? Oh, I hope works like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he turns up at the World Cup, England don't win the World Cup, he leaves the World Cup. <laughs> not have a dream. Yeah, yeah it's like, I turn up at work, I don't get promoted, time to go home. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's start with some TV news stories. You're going to see three news reports, but only one of them is real and has been broadcast while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you spot the real story? Let's have a look at report A. Acne. An affliction suffered by more than 90% of teenagers in the UK. And many, it seems, are prepared to go to drastic lengths to find a cure. Even if it involves putting snails on your face. From this small clinic in Kent, dermatologist Sam Green is using so-called snail therapy to treat patients with the skin condition. Well, snail trails contain an enzyme which have been found to be very effective in treating blackheads and spots. The reason we use live snails is because the trails are fresher and much more potent. Ben Keane became a convert after all other spot treatments he tried failed. It does sound a bit weird, but, I mean, my skin's definitely improved. And, you know, it is kind of fairly... It's, it's a disgusting idea, and all my, all my friends thought so. But, um, but ultimately, I'd, I'd rather have snails on my face than spots. With the market for acne products seemingly ever-expanding, could it be that acne sufferers will soon be queuing up, not at the pharmacy, but at the snail farm? Josie, when, when you were a teenager, would you have put snails on your face to fit in? Well, I, I'm from Kent, and I have objections. There are no doctors in Kent, right, for a start. <laughs> Secondly, that he doesn't have a Kentish accent. A Kentish accent is like, all right, what, why are you doing that? I hate immigrants. <laughs> you really, you love Kent. <laughs> oh, I just have doubts this is Kent. Also, at the end, when he went pharmacy to a snail farm, there's no, there's no such thing as a snail farm. Is there? 
Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think they, yeah. the French eat snails, and I don't think they collect them individually. I think. <laughs> <laughs> snail farm. I'm sure there's a farm for there's every animal. There's not a animal. snail farm in Kent. There are orchards and racists. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think what you might be doing is taking a few, albeit upsetting, experiences from your childhood <laughs> and extrapolating wildly. What happens when you've used up, when your spots have gone, do you then eat them? Or what? Oh, I don't know, that might be slightly cannibalistic. Oh, it's a sort of, of then the... it's like a vicious circle, because all your spots go and then you eat them like dripping in garlic butter and all your spots come back, so you have to get more snails. Also, also what they'd be dripping in is, is your own yeah. facial grease. Yeah. <laughs> These <laughs> snails have been <laughs> marinating in me. Also, they wouldn't get the whole... You know, they just he seems to be just going along there. Yeah. You'd have to have someone with... You'd have to have the, the trainer or whatever saying, <laughs> come on, the whole face! <laughs> the whole face! Do that bit, <laughs> you stupid snail. The earlobe, fool. Yeah. Why yes. wouldn't they just get the slime and just put it straight on? You don't need the snail. Well, yeah. the guy said the fresher the goo, the better. Oh, the guy said. <laughs> <laughs> OK. He's a fake guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at story B. He introduces it as an imitation report, but within moments, panic spreads across the country. The presenter says that Russian tanks have entered Georgia, and viewers are shown these pictures. The images are in fact from the 2008 war, but as viewers are told that the Russian air force is also now involved, many begin to fear the worst. The station then cuts to a talk show and apologizes for the panic the reporters caused, but outside, angry and confused Georgians were already demanding answers. The station says it was trying to show the real threat of how events might unfold, but few will be thanking them for the chaos it created. Is this an example of... Uh, is this the Georgian bubble? Or with an example of just how wrong the programme can go if the wrong producer's in charge? <laughs> they did invent... That. Well, there are, there are parallels yeah, with this what show. I'm saying. Just but... be careful, Mitchell, that's what I'm saying. Right, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, that was certainly BBC News's feeling, was yeah. that, uh, <laughs> is that this show could cause mass panic because I'm so plausible. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit like a... Sort of, what was that...? Oh, no, I'm going to show my... War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. That, like, so the like military War of the Worlds. Or Ghost Watch, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that takes me back. Yeah. Pipes. What? Doesn't take him back. Ghost Watch. Yes, do you remember There's that? There's a thing with Sarah Green. Really where they, ill-judged they were... Halloween thing. They, but they... everyone thought that she'd been killed. And Michael Aspel hosted it from the studio and there was a poltergeist called Pipes. You don't remember that? Oh, come on, man. No, hang on, this is why we've, <laughs> we've reversed this. It's like, I've been in some sort of bubble and I don't know about... It's 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 Michael Aspel and Sarah Green yeah. and everyone thought she was dead and yeah. what? And everyone, thought, everyone in Britain thought it was real. I remember watching it, I was terrified. A, a ghost called... Pipes. pipes. Yeah. As in, in the, the plural of pipe. Come yeah. on, Grandad, you must remember that. No. no he must like have he's... taken breaks between your Latin homework at some time. <laughs> I, I remember what I've watched a lot of Knight Rider. I... <laughs> now, that is not plausible. <laughs> no, I, do you know what? I didn't believe it was true. <laughs> but I, obviously, if I'd seen a thing with Sarah Green and a ghost called Pipes, I would have shat myself. <laughs> Well, uh, have a look anyway at Report C. Get the realistic he is the world's highest paid speaker, charging up to £6,000 a minute. But now it's being claimed that Tony Blair will go to any length to avoid a reception like this one. The infamous Women's Institute speech he later described as terrifying. Thank you very much. It was alleged by The Telegraph this week that Britain's former PM has been hiring people to clap during his speeches. We shouldn't necessarily be too surprised about this because this is exactly the way that he behaved when he was Labour leader at his party conference speeches. There they were, the performing seals, clapping their flippers, and this is exactly what you expect at many, many political speeches now. This ain't a surprise. But agents for big-name speakers are more sceptical. I'm afraid I think it's nonsense. I think it's a very good idea because it's just the same as a floor manager in telly getting an audience to clap, but I don't think it's true. True or not, one thing is clear, this former Prime Minister hasn't lost his knack for attracting controversy.
Tony Blair refused to comment on the story, uh, as no one offered him any cash. But, um... <laughs> Katie, do you think Blair's that shallow? Yes, definitely. It's one of the things I like most about him. <laughs> Once you throw morals out of the window, he becomes a bit sort of like a sort of quite a sort of sexy Bond villain. <laughs> he does. I quite liked it. Quentin Letts was obviously trying to be a bit cool when he went, that ain't a good idea. Yeah. What's the other cool word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ain't. He was pleased with that, wasn't he? <laughs> then he showed everyone his Nike high tops. <laughs> Is that a shoe? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the time has come to vote. To recap, the three stories are... A. Snail trails can cure acne. B. Fake news report causes panic in Georgia. Or C. Tony Blair is hiring people to applaud during his speeches. So which is the real story? Please vote A, B or C now. Ooh. Right, well, Katie's gone for Tony Blair hiring people to applaud during his speeches. Purely because she finds him so sexy. <laughs> and Josie and Tim, you've gone for B, the fake news report causing panic in Georgia. Well, I'm happy to say, Tim and Josie, you're both right. Well done. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to know what sick puppy in the uh, production office came up with snails on faces and then made that poor boy lie there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he was paid. If that was the work experience runner, then I'm going to find out. That, that, that poor boy was the series producer's son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, television, yeah. how oh, I love you. Oh, come on, it's not that bad, a snail on your face for a bit. <laughs> isn't we it? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. You're going to feel really bad in a year's time if he's, you know, all of his skin's peeled off. <laughs> he grows a shell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you're suggesting that the snails were shagging. <laughs> they've got both sets of sexual organs, there you are, you see? Right up the nostril. <laughs> <laughs> and that one on the back there, I don't know what's coming out of it, but... <laughs> this is just a bit of general goo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when did you last have a snail on your face? <laughs> I've never had a snail on my face, all right. Have you ever said, that's just a bit of general goo? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, the, the Georgia news report was real and genuinely caused a huge amount of, of panic and then everyone got furious. Um, the broadcaster's excuse was that it was trying to show the real threat of how events might unfold. I don't know whether that's what the news is actually supposed to do. I think, <laughs> I think that's, that's what the weather does. <laughs> but, um, um, and Katie, you believed Tony Blair would have hired... Clappers. I think Tony Blair doesn't, wouldn't ever actually, thinking about it now, wouldn't need to hire in professional clappers. All he'd have to do is go, well, you could either clap and let me carry on, or if you don't like me, I could go off and Gordon Brown could come and talk. <laughs> and then everyone would just wildly start applauding, yeah. because however bad Tony Blair is, that's just, that's, the he's, alternative yeah. is much, much worse. He's like the disappointing main course in a restaurant famous for horrible puddings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, at the end of that round, Tim and Josie, well done, you both get a point. <laughs> so, next we move on to the newspapers. Three stories, and again, only one of them genuinely did feature in the newspapers while you were inside the bubble. The other two are fakes. Can you tell the difference? So, here's story A. This is the news that a new lipstick has gone on sale that changes colour when women are turned on. In tests, it led to a number of sexual assaults on clowns. <laughs> um, Josie, does that look plausible to you? Is that a product you think you... It doesn't look plausible, but I do like the idea of clowns being sexually assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> Global hypercolour, that came and went. Global hypercolour? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Sorry, is this, is this what pipes used to wear? <laughs> what? Isolated. My education was not a 15-year bubble. <laughs> What's global hypercolour? Oh, David! It was T-shirts that had a heat-sensitive dye in them so that people could put... <laughs> don't look at me like that. People could put hot hands on a T-shirt and you would see their hands in colour where and they were. And then if your dad wore one and danced, it would... Yeah, it would sweat. sweat. Yeah, it would all go multicoloured under your armpits. Well, why aren't all clothes like that? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So really the idea remember. is it's a T-shirt that could sort of sh show if you're a bit sweaty yeah. and if someone's groped you. Yeah. Or, 
Yeah. Or cords. I'm sure they could make it with cords. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't mock the cords. <laughs> um, OK, well, let's have a look at um, story B. This is, the, <laughs> this is the news that uh, a camera has gone on sale on the internet that takes naked photographs of fully clothed people by using the same technology as the new airport scanners. Why are all of these sexy stories? I don't know, really, I suppose. <laughs> well, there are a lot of sexy stories in the press. We live in a sort of sex-obsessed culture. Okay. I'm a sex addict. <laughs> <laughs> That might, that might affect the show editorially on some level that I don't, I'm not even aware of. Um, I'll tell you why this is quite plausible. Whoever has mocked this up, if this is not true, knows their tabloids, because how our Rianne might look is exactly what um, yeah, very good. a paper would do with their, with their current favourite page three girl. Quite fit, didn't she? <laughs> then I've got to say. I think they might have deliberately chosen them. <laughs> Just to keep the story and the round of this show. Yes. Keep it nice and sexy. It would be yeah. a very different thing if, they, if, for some bizarre reason, that tabloid had chosen Anne Widdicombe to, uh, to illustrate yeah. their point. And, and I think they probably would have to use the technology because there may not be so many extant photographs yes. of Anne Widdicombe exactly. topless. Yes. Of our Anne. Yeah. Of our Anne. Yeah. 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 She refers to her bosom as her upper circumference, that I really like. I really like that. I'm that sounds start. almost astronomical. Yeah. <laughs> And I mean in the sense to do with massive planetary bodies, not in the sense... It's fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, well, let's have a look at story C. And there's another sexy story. This is the news that a 13-year-old boy has ordered strippers on his father's credit card for his birthday party. He got caught, so that's the last time he'll borrow a credit card for sexual gratification. Next time, he'll just use a hole in the wall. Uh, <laughs> Come on. No, you can't chastise them because as soon as you said it, you looked really pleased with yourself. <laughs> and I thought they should be pleased with me as well. <laughs> I want some consensus. I'm pleased with you. It's very Thanks, funny. Tim's pleased with me. <laughs> and you hate me. <laughs> um, anyway, Tim, what do you reckon? Well, I don't know. It's almost worth sort of scrimping together a bit of money if you want to do that sort of thing rather than. What, it has something <laughs> terribly sort of like a kind of patrician kind of figure. <laughs> it's always worth scrimping together with money. Actually, yeah. I, what I did, I did a paper round yeah. for I weeks and weeks and weeks, and I hired my own prostitute. Yes, I did. And I think I enjoyed screwing her all the more <laughs> than I paid for it myself. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, before you vote, let's recap the stories. Is it A? New lipstick changes colour when you're turned on. B. A camera that takes naked pictures is for sale on the internet. Or C, a 13-year-old boy orders strippers on his father's credit card. Please vote A, B or C now. Oh, right. Well, uh, Josie and Tim both gone for the camera that takes naked photographs. Katie, you've gone for the new lipstick mm -hmm. that uh, changes colour. And, uh, well, Katie, I'm happy to say you're right. <laughs> yeah! Oh! According to the article, each £12 tube comes with a colour chart <laughs> so men can work out how windy their partner is feeling. That's one thing that turns me on, it's a man consulting a chart. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Katie gets a point. <laughs> so, you've, you've, all, you've all been living together in a house for the best part of a week. Uh, what was that like? I did my homework, yeah. which is just the writing that I've got to do. And then in the evenings, we would play a game, a card game called Shithead, where, um, <laughs> yeah, where the loser um, is called Shithead. And I lost every single game of Shithead that we played. So that was mostly what I did. Right. I, I worked on my own during the day, and then I was just sort of set myself up to be called Shithead for the rest well, of the day. Well, maybe if you'd been a bit more sociable, people wouldn't have spent all the evening calling <laughs> you yeah. Shithead. People wouldn't have contrived a game that maybe we could call <laughs> yeah. you Shithead. <laughs> Spent all day. Shit head all day. It's just I wasn't there. No. In this case, a seven is higher than a nine. <laughs> <laughs> you shithead. <laughs> Josie did her maths homework. Josie's doing maths A level. I, I kept having nightmares that I was doing maths A level, so I thought I might as well do maths A level. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm bloody living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, I'm, 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 I'm very impressed that you're 
genuinely taking on unnecessary education. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we'll move on to the next round, uh, which is a roundup of some more stories you'll have missed because you're in the bubble. Have a look at these three quick reports. See what you think. <laughs> Story A. Reading-based band League of the Righteous were raided by police after they mistook them for an Iranian-backed terrorist group called the League of the Righteous. We didn't know that we shared a name of a terrorist group at all. We were practicing here about 10 o'clock, must have been. Before we knew it, suddenly we had armed police on us. Story B. An OAP from Norfolk is teaching his fellow pensioners to defend themselves using their walking sticks. If what they're saying is they need to protect themselves, then you need to know where you can hit to do that without causing serious damage. And story C. After a group announces plans to run the London Marathon dressed as Muslim cleric Abu Hamza, there are protests as all religious dress is banned. I think the organisers of the London Marathon have gone completely nuts. The fun nuns are one of the centrepieces of the marathon. I, I really, really want the first one to be true so much. The League of the Righteous? Yeah. Mistaken for the League of the Righteous. <laughs> yeah. It's an easy mistake to make. They have identical names, you know. Yeah. It's like mistaking you for David Mitchell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is very similar to that. I did that yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah. But you wouldn't be arrested for writing Cloud Atlas, would you? Cloud Atlas is not it's an not... act of terrorism. Well, no. I, didn't... <laughs> I didn't know there was another David Mitchell. Yeah. I was just imagining someone no, called David in Mitchell. In oh, incredibly thought... unusual, though my name is. <laughs> There is, yeah, there are several other David Mitchells, including a former Tory MP, the author of Cloud Atlas, and Dame Nellie Melba's father. Although he, to give him credit, is dead. <laughs> she has a good grace to die. Yeah, a good grace to die. Yeah. The other ones, well, I'm waiting. Do you uh, ever Google? Are you the top David Mitchell when you Google? Um, yes. <laughs> I said, for a moment, I thought, shall I deny having Googled my own name? And I thought, I'm sorry, if there's anyone on Earth with a computer who hasn't Googled their name, mm. then they basically, they need help yeah. recognising their it's own existence. It's interesting, yeah, it's weirder to deny it now, isn't it? Yeah. That's like suffering just from a sort of appalling chronic lack of curiosity, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's like never having masturbated. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, uh, I think the time has come to vote, so just to recap on the stories, is it A, police raid banned after mix-up over name, B, OAP walking stick self-defence classes prove popular in Norfolk, or C, London Marathon bans religious dress after discovering runners plan to dress as Abu Hamza. Uh, one is real, two are fakes. Please vote A, B or C now. <laughs> Well, uh, Josie's gone for A, the uh, mix-up over the League of the Righteous, and the other two of you have gone for the OAP self-defence classes. Well, I have to say, Tim and Katie, you're right. Oh. It is the OAP. Oh. Um, here tonight than I normally do when I play along at home, which is sad, because when I play along at home, I've obviously had access to the news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, 61-year-old Kevin Garwood from Norwich has indeed developed a new form of martial art and has been teaching his contemporaries to defend themselves using walking sticks. I don't think it counts as a martial art if you just one day pick up your walking stick and start waving it around. <laughs> it's, it is when... Look! Whoa, that's, yes! <laughs> that's not just waving it around. He's going to behead the guy. <laughs> and Josie, yes, you, you, you wanted to believe and did oh. believe the League of the Righteous story. It's a double sadness that it isn't true and that I didn't win. I thought you might have seen through it because you might have recognised the band as, as the guys from Malefice. You, you know the, the band Malefice? They wanted us to mention their name. Oh, I see. <laughs> Malefice. Are they touring? Uh, Can you also... <laughs> would, you, would you also be willing to look straight down your camera and say that Malefice are your favourite band? <laughs> Malefice are my favourite band. Yeah! <laughs> I think I might have just finished their careers. <laughs> Uh, but, no, that wasn't true, but it strikes me that I hope that when the police are looking to arrest terrorists, they do more than just look up the name and sort of go, <laughs> oh, I thought that was like a Middle Eastern group, but uh, <laughs> lucky for us, they seem to be based in Reading. <laughs> 
Well, uh, at the end of that round, Tim and Katie both get points. Yay. <laughs> it was uh, worth me and Tim getting all those papers in and the bubble, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You see, now, what? you said that, people on the internet will go, well, I was at the recording. <laughs> she said they got papers in. <laughs> people will ask me that on Twitter. Oh, no. I'll have to go... No, they didn't get papers in. <laughs> it would render the entire thing utterly pointless. That's, um, that's too many characters for Twitter. <laughs> yes, people keep saying, uh, how, how come there's a TV in there? Have you noticed? And well, I there's... keep saying, well, it's possible to have a TV screen on which you can watch DVDs yeah. and not receive actually, BBC One. Actually, they're, they're, all the TVs are disconnected, I think. They're not... Yes, of course they're disconnected! <laughs> 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 it's not just going to go, oh, hang on, I'll just try Channel 4 News. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this will help! Well, I didn't expect you, you, that you actually can use the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that! <laughs> it's not true! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Our final round is on the buzzer. Is it uh, still... Sorry, is it still all to play for? Yeah. Or is, well, I mean, or is Josie out of by, <laughs> by, <laughs> I mean, by all... Nothing. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> uh, yes, well, yeah, it is all to play for, because okay. a lot of okay. points are exchanged in the last round. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered. Yeah. Please continue to bother. <laughs> <laughs> As I understood it, you were booked for the evening. <laughs> Don't talk to me like, like a strip. Not like a strip. Oh, my God! <laughs> Our final round <laughs> is on the buzzer. I'll read you some news stories from the last week that may or may not be real. If you're first to buzz in, please answer real or fake. If you're right, you win a point. If you're wrong, you lose a point. So, let's begin with... According to her personal psychic, Jordan's sunbed may be possessed. Uh, Josie. I think that's fake. It's real. Oh! oh! The syringe, said to have administered the fatal dose of drugs to Michael Jackson, is set to go on sale in Las Vegas. Uh, Tim. Fake. Real. Oh! Someone has hacked into Google Earth and renamed all the capital cities Margate. Uh. <laughs> Seriously. Please let that be real. Fake. Oh! In Nottinghamshire, a fleet of Chinese sky lanterns inscribed with people's hopes and dreams have crashed and burnt down Jeff Hoon's shed. <laughs> Fake. Fake it is, yes. <laughs> Gordon Brown has been labelled as a slapper by Mumsnet after talking to rival site Netmums. Uh, Josie. Real. That is real. <laughs> In an escalation of the Downing Street bullying row, it has been claimed that Alastair Campbell once gave Mo Molum a Chinese uh, burn. Oh. Tim. <laughs> fake. That's fake. <laughs> Overcome with emotion, the owner of the winning dog at Crufts this week said he and his pet were lovers. Uh, Katie. Real. Fake. Oh. <laughs> and finally, Anthea Turner's two-date tour, an audience with Anthea, <laughs> has been cancelled after a 780-seat venue only managed to sell two tickets. Uh, Katie. Real. It is real. <laughs> so, the winner is... Tim! <laughs> um, anyway, thank you to my guests, Katie Brand, Tim Key and Josie Long. Join me next week when we'll be back on Friday and when coming out of the bubble will be Miranda Hart, Robert Webb, Shappy Corsandi and the cast and crew of Andrew Lloyd Webber's unpopular new musical, <laughs> Love Never Dies. <laughs> <laughs> Although I may have made one of those up. Good night. <laughs>